Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I'm going to talk about something that a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to narcissistic abuse. I'm going to talk about how the covert narcissist controls you by guilt tripping you. Covert narcissists try to control you by a lot of things, right? They try to control you with the silent treatment. It's a form of emotional abuse. It's to punish you. It's to control you to maybe never bring things up to them because they'll go into the silent treatment. Um, it's Or it's to punish you in some way. But one of the other ways that covert narcissists try to control you is by guilt tripping you. They love to make you feel bad. They make they love to make you feel bad for them. They're constantly playing the victim like you're the big bad wolf. See, when you deal with a covert narcissist, one of their tactics is to make you look like the bad guy and they're the good guy, all right? Or you're picking on them, or you don't let things go, or you're so sensitive, or you make a big deal out of nothing, or why do you keep bringing things up from the past? They're trying to give you a complex so that you feel like, you know, maybe you're too much. Maybe you're trying to hold them accountable. And then one of the things that they do is they try to guilt trip you by saying, I've done everything for you and you're making a big deal out of this, okay? Here's the thing with the covert narcissist and this is why they're so insidious. They can be nice from time to time. They can even do a good deed from time to time. But one thing about a covert narcissist, they'll never let you live it down. They'll constantly bring up that one or two things that they've ever done for you in a whole lifetime, and they'll try to guilt trip you into making you feel bad that you even, you know, try to make them accountable for something else. So what they do is they'll bring up that one instance when they did something for you, or they were nice to you, or maybe they went out of their way for you. And remember, anytime they did that for you, it was never for nothing. A narcissist never does anything unless they intend on getting something back. And one of those ways that they they guilt trip they guilt trip you is by doing something nice for you. And what's that going to do? That's going to make you feel feel bad for them and you're going to, you know, you're not going to hold them accountable and it's going to make you feel indebted to them. Okay, this is what a covert narcissist wants. They want you to feel like you're indebted to them. You owe them, all right? This is why a lot of times they don't want to take favors from you or they don't want you to do anything nice for them um, because they don't want to ever, ever be indebted to you. It's always you're indebted to them. And some of them can be takers and take things, but they don't acknowledge what you've done for them. They, they try to, you know, trivialize it and say, oh, well, that's no big deal what you did. Okay. They don't appreciate anything that you do for them and they're going to downplay it. And it's always, you know, how you're supposed to be indebted to them. They've done everything for you. And you see this with narcissistic parents all the time. In other words, they feel that because they gave life to you, or because, you know, they supported you as a child, you are forever indebted to them, all right? And they try to control their children this way so that their children never speak back to them. The children never, ever hold them uh, you know, accountable because they're on a different echelon, okay? They're above you. A narcissistic parent feels they're above their children. You're not on an equal plane. And they'll look at it like, well, I'm the mother or I'm the father. You know, you do what I say. And they do not respect boundaries, okay? And you'll see this if you ever get involved with somebody, your partner, and they have a narcissistic parent. What happens is their narcissistic parent, because they control your partner, they're going to try to control you. They may try to control how you raise your kids. They'll be adding their two cents and then they'll be making like, well, you know, why don't you call so much? Oh, you never call. Oh, you never come by. And what is all this to do? This is to guilt trip your partner. And then what's your partner going to do? 
They're going to argue with you because they feel guilty about their narcissistic parent. So it ruins relationship. It creates a wedge between you and your partner. See, when your partner has a narcissistic mother, for instance, okay, that narcissistic mother is never going to want your partner to ever be close with you. They're going to condition your partner to not open up and be vulnerable with you. They're going to condition your partner to never trust you. And what's that going to do? That's going to cause friction between you and your partner. Because what you have there is you have an, a partner who's going to be loyal to their narcissistic parent. They're going to be married to their narcissistic parent and they're not going to be married to you. And why is that? Because that narcissistic parent guilt tripped them. All right. So this is how they do it. They, and the narcissistic parent is going to play like, you know, poor me, I'm all alone. This is your narcissistic in-law. Poor me, I'm all alone. You know, nobody comes by. No, and they want to get involved in your life and control your life with your partner. And they cause a lot of problems and they break up marriages, you guys. So you have to, when you get involved with somebody, I'm giving you gold here. Always look at the family. Woo! Always look at that family and see how they're connected to that narcissistic mother or narcissistic father. And if that narcissistic mother or father, usually it's the mother who has control over your partner, then you're de you're going to go down a road of disaster unless your partner can stand up to that narcissistic parent, okay? But Guilt tripping isn't just with narcissistic parents. It also happens in relationships as well. So one of the things that covert narcissists constantly do is they constantly bring up every little trivial thing they ever did for you and they don't let you forget it. And they constantly bring it up. But when you bring up what you've ever done, they won't acknowledge it. They won't validate it. They'll play it off like it was nothing and they only want to hear what they want to hear, okay? So they always think they're the authority on everything. So covert narcissists love, love, love to guilt trip and make you feel bad and control you to never, ever open your mouth because you feel bad. And another thing that they do too, let's say you have a partner, a covert narcissist partner that, that is cheating or something like that. What they'll do, okay, to alleviate any kind of guilty, fee they do feel guilt, you guys, and I've seen this, is they buy presents to, you know, not feel that guilt that they have. They suppress all those guilty feelings, but there, there is guilt there because they're going out and they may be buying something or do something out of nowhere that's especially nice because they know deep down what they're doing is wrong. See, narcissists are very aware of what they do, but they don't want to self-reflect. They don't want to look at themselves in a shameful type of way. So in order to alleviate those shameful feelings, they cover it up by maybe buying you a gift out of the blue. Okay. But, and then if you ever question them on anything, they could bring up what they did for you by buying you these gifts. And I've had people that I've dealt with, you know, in my life that used to do this all the time. They used to buy gifts for other people. And, and this is their way of creating that indebtedness so that these people owed them. Okay. They do it also so that these, they could get a favor out of these people later on. They also do it too, because it's a form of manipulation to get these people to side with them. Okay. And you see this in families and what they do is when, let's say you're not getting along with somebody in your family, what that covert narcissist is going to do is they're going to be extremely nice to the other members of the family so that the other members of the family go against you. You're the bad guy. And this is how scapegoating starts, okay? They target you, they triangulate, they mob on you, and they gang on you to single you out. And the way that they get the support of these other people is by being really nice to these other people. Or if these other people in the family need them for something, they're going to support the covert narcissist. All right. So you guys, 
They love, and then they'll talk about how they did everything for you and how you're so ungrateful, okay? They love to commiserate with other people, gossip, smear you, and talk about how you are just so ungrateful. They love to also talk about how you have mental issues and that you're sensitive and that you take everything to heart, okay? When in fact, it's because they don't want to take accountability. They want to sweep everything under the rug. They don't want to hear about it. That's why when you have a fight with a covert narcissist, you know, you go no contact with them. And what's the first thing they do when they come back? They don't bring up the argument, okay? And you're saying, wow, they're just contacting me out of the blue and they're talking about other things. And we had this big argument and we, we didn't talk for months. And now they're contacting me and they're not bringing anything up about the argument. Well, that's because they don't want to bring it up. They want you to forget it. They want to sweep it under the rug and they don't want to take accountability. But what happens is when you don't, you know, acknowledge a problem and resolve a problem, that problem is going to come back again. It's like a smoking gun, all right? It's sitting there, it's smoking, it's going to go off again unless you resolve the problem. You've got to face problems in order to move on in your life. It also builds resentment. There'll be resentment if you don't work out those problems, okay? But a way of gaslighting that covert narcissists do and to control you is to guilt trip you and bring up that one or two incidences that they did something nice for you, okay? Because And also they do it because they want other people to see that they did something nice for you so that these other people, when you bring it up to them, that, you know, the covert narcissist is, you know, doing something snaky. These other people are going to look at you sideways and look at you like, you are you know, there's something wrong with you. This person's so nice. I saw they did something for you. But then these other manipulated people don't see that the covert narcissist has manipulated the whole situation to make it look like they're the good guy because they did that one nice thing for you or two nice things for you and that you know they're only showing that side of themselves to make themselves look good and to fool people and this is why covert narcissists are so nice to outsiders and mean to you at home. Number one, they got you already, okay? So they don't need to impress you. They don't need to win you over. You are the old shoe in the house, all right? They are nice to outsiders because number one, they're prospecting for new supply where they could use these other people. Number two, they're gonna use these other people to team up against you if you give that covert narcissist a problem. Now these outsiders are gonna be manipulated to think the covert narcissist is a nice person and you're the monster, okay? They manipulate people on their side. And how do they manipulate people? By acts of kindness and flattery, okay? This is how they do it. And they also do it with the guilt tripping. Like I said, they're going to guilt trip and they're also going to bring up to these other people all the nice things that they may have done for you, which is, you know, like I said, trivial, all right? Maybe once or twice they did something nice, and but they're going to bring it up to these other people, maybe members in your family or friends or somebody and said, I did everything for her or I did everything for him. And they're just so ungrateful. They're going to call you ungrateful and they're going to tell people about the things that you did. Okay. And these other people are going to side with the covert narcissist against you. Okay. How do I know this? Because I lived it. All right. That's why I know these covert narcissists so well. I've lived it all around the board. I've seen it in my family. I've seen it with my ex-partners. I've seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it in business. I've seen it in education institutions. I've seen it in the medical field. I know how these people operate. So this is why I'm telling you, you've got to watch them. They're master manipulators. They also are master manipulators when it comes to narc abuse influencers. 
another big narc abuse influencer who is no longer with us, and she was great, was Angie. And she spoke about this as well, um, where she talked about how you have to watch covert narcissist influencers, okay, who come about, who build a platform and pretend that they're a victim of narcissistic abuse and they're nothing but a con. And I have a con who copies what I say. I just spotted another reel that somebody pointed out to me where I talked about when will a narcissist miss you. And I said, a narcissist is gonna miss you when they're not doing good and basically when they can't replace you. That's when they're gonna miss you. They're gonna miss the supply that you had to offer. And I posted it eight days ago and boom, uh, you know, yesterday they came out with a reel almost, almost exactly plagiarizing everything that I said. This person, narc abuse influencer person is, you know, is a narc abuse coach from India who portrays himself as a victim. Well, if you are such a victim, why do you keep copying and plagiarizing and rewording what I say and putting out reels and trying to make it your own, okay? People that are real don't do that, okay? So that shows you that this person can't be authentic, okay? Because you wouldn't need to copy what somebody else says. And I get these other people that come, these trolls that come and say, well, everybody copies everybody. That is not true, okay? Yeah, there may, you may have similar concepts where you talk about gaslighting, triangulation, this and that. But then when you have somebody that's copying something almost word for word and plagiarizing it, that is stealing, okay? That, that's why we have copyright laws. That's why we have plagiarism laws. I can't go to another, a New York Times bestseller and put out a book and just switch a couple of words around and call it my own, all right? That is stealing. This is what these trolls don't get, okay? But I went off on a tangent today, but I want you to make you understand. But this podcast, you guys, is primarily how covert narcissists use guilt tripping. And you see it, like I said, with narcissistic parents and your partner. Your partner, too, is going to throw it up in your face and say, I've done everything for you. In other words, don't, don't ever open your mouth. I've done everything for you. They want you, this is their way to control you, to make you feel bad because of that one or two nice things they ever did. They're going to throw it up in your face and make you feel bad so that you never, ever, ever question them on it. And I, I dealt with this with one of the teachers that I was dealing with too for my son, where this teacher was totally taking advantage, you know, showing up late, this and that. And when I questioned them on it, they brought up about how, oh, I went out and I bought all these, you know, activities to do with your kid and everything like this was to guilt trip me, guilt trip me because they went out and bought all these like little activities to work on with my kid. Like I shouldn't question them on the fact that they're late, they're unreliable or something like that. And this is, I spotted it right away because I know covert narcissism. And I said, this is a form of guilt tripping. This person is trying to guilt trip me so that I don't question them on taking accountability. So you see, you guys, you see it in everyday life around you, all right? You gotta spot it. Just because somebody did something nice for you doesn't mean that they should not be held accountable, okay? Period, dot, end of story, all right? And you also gotta look at the pattern of behavior that they've done, okay? Just because somebody did one or two nice things for you you know, in a lifetime, what did they do the other parts of the lifetime? They may cause you pain. They may cause you grief. They may have lied to you. They may have cheated on you. They may have abandoned you and not been there for you. But see, they don't want to acknowledge all those things. They just want to bring up the one or two times that they did something for you to guilt trip you. All right. Don't be a sucker and be guilted out because of the, the things that they bring. Somebody needs to be held accountable when they're wrong. Everybody should be held accountable for their actions when they're wrong, okay? So I'm losing my voice. I hope this helps you guys understand and have a great day. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, go to the link in the bio of this podcast. 
where it's Ask Yaz. My website explains how to do it. Follow me on YouTube. I'm going to be transitioning over to YouTube at the Game Exposed podcast where I have over 4,000 videos on there and a lot on covert narcissism because I know it so well, all right? And have a great day. Facebook, it, you guys, and Instagram is the game exp123, and TikTok is the game exposed. Have a great day.